The use of rape as a weapon of war has been one of the many gruesome features of the ongoing conflict. International human rights groups and media organizations have made reference to the gruesome nature of the attack on women in Tigray as indicator of the genocidal intent of invading forces. We spoke with one survivor who says she was attacked by Eritrean forces while attempting to escape the ethnic cleansing campaign in Western Tigray. <laughs> After three of them raped me, I couldn't control myself. I don't know what happened next. We were in the middle of nowhere. No one could help us. The area was occupied by enemy forces. I don't remember anything till the next day. I have three children aged 4, 6, and 14. I traveled for days with my children trying to escape shelling. We would spend the night in farmers' houses and ask them for food. The survivor says the assault was made even more difficult to bear due to the systematic destruction of health facilities in Tigray that has seen over 80% of health facilities in Tigray almost completely destroyed. When I went to see health professionals, they said I needed three units of blood. They said there were no medical equipment in Shura, but suggested we go to Aksum. When my brother reached Aksum, he realized the equipments were also looted. Nurse Mulemesfin works at the only one-stop center for survivors of sexual violence in Tigray. She says that even if survivors were to make it to health facilities, they were unlike to access care. There is no medication, no medical equipment, no doctors. Money have been displaced. The survivor says she is also suffering from cervical cancer, but is not able to receive medical care due to the ongoing blockade. I'm suffering from a cervical cancer. The only place I can get medication is in Addis Ababa, but I can't get there because of the siege. I'm awaiting my death. I'm worried about my children. She is suffering day and night. Only painkiller like morphine could help alleviate the pain caused by the cancer, and there is no way to get that medication. Mulu says the international community has to play its part to ensure that medical supplies are able to reach the Grai. Why should civilians suffer due to lack of food and medication? Why should people die because they can't access medication? Why should our sister die in front of our eyes? Why should we live cry? The international community, especially developed countries, should focus on supplying food and medication to human beings instead of weapons. The World Health Organization has said there are 3.9 million people in need of medical assistance in Tigray, many mothers and children suffering from easily treatable illness.